Hey everybody, Frank Zabski here, the Polish Pizziola, 23% Italian, member of the Pizza Gavons. We review the pizza, the place, and the personality. And remember, all our reviews are oven fresh pies, never anything out of a box. Today's video is going to be part two of our two-part series on how to make New Haven style pizza, or a beats as we call it in New Haven. Here We have an incredible group on Facebook called All About New Haven Style a beats. We've got about 7,500 members right now, and it's growing by the day. Uh, it's a really good place. There's a lot of people from all over the world, really, um, talking all, all we do is talk about New Haven on Beats. So if you're interested, check us out on Facebook. If you guys really like this video, I'd really appreciate you hitting the thumbs up button. Also, if you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, it would be a huge help for us. We're really trying to grow our YouTube okay. channel. In the comments section, I have a section that I have an affiliate link for all the big stuff in these two videos, both the dough video and in here. I really would appreciate your support. It helps the channel and it helps me uh, be able to buy different things and give you guys more content. Okay, everyone, now we're gonna start getting going and we're gonna start talking about what you guys need to get in order to make this a beats on the steel plate. I'm gonna go over everything one at a time. I'm gonna give you a little bit of uh, instruction or any tips or anything as we go along. So here we go. First thing we have is a wooden peel. You always use a wooden peel to assemble your abits and then you launch the wooden peel onto the steel plate. This peel is actually 18 inches by 18 inches. We're going to go over a little bit more of that later when I discuss with you uh, how to measure for the steel plate in your oven, but this is an 18 by 18 inch wooden peel. Next thing we have is a steel peel and this is to retrieve. Wood to launch, steel to retrieve. So when you launch the uh, beats on the steel plate with the wooden peel, you let it sit for probably 30, 45 seconds, maybe a minute, depending on how hot it is. And then you take this peel and you go underneath and you pick it up and you turn it around. You never want to turn a pizza with a wooden peel. And I'm not saying it hasn't been done before or can't be done, but again, steel is to retrieve. That's what you're gonna need. Okay guys, the next thing is going to be the mozzarella. This is deli sliced boar's head mozzarella, about a medium cut. I like to use this because I think it's a lot easier to work with than the shredded. Also, if you buy the shredded and you don't shred it yourself, there's actually a film that they put on the cheese and I just think it takes away from the, from the abits. But um, if you went down to uh, Pepe's on Worcester Street, they're going to use this exact format. Sally's actually uses whole milk mozzarella but they basically take a block and they shred it fresh. Either one's fine. I like the deli slice, boar's head. You can use whatever you want. Pecorino Romano. This is really the magic, I think. Um, you can buy this online or you can get it at your local Italian store, but uh, I usually buy a quarter wheel and I um, grind it myself. Uh, doesn't really matter, you can do it, not do it, but you want Pecorino Romano and you want it uh, as finely grated as you possibly can. Again, this really, I think, is, if there's a secret weapon, I think this is it. This is the dough. This is the dough we made the other day. Uh, obviously, this is a proofing container. I went over that with the other video, but this is a six cup Gladware container and uh, you can see the dough in here, and we're gonna bake this in a little while. Cooling rack, a lot of times people miss this step, but when you take that of beets out of the oven, you really wanna put it on a cooling rack, and really what it does is it, it, it allows the pizza to breathe so that it stays crunchy. Next thing, can opener. You're gonna need this for the can of tomatoes that we're gonna talk about. Always need an extra spoon. This is a dough scraper. Um, actually, this is a flour scraper. When you actually uh, work on a surface with flour, this thing is incredible. It's a plastic, basically a plastic squeegee, but it allows cleanup and it's highly recommended. Abit's cutter. Doesn't matter what kind. Obviously, when you're done, you gotta 
cut up the diabetes. Semolina flour, that's what I use. I know people use just regular bench flour. They use cornmeal. I use semolina. Usually what I do is uh, when I first start making the albeats, I will put a coat of flour on it first, and then I'll put this on, but I won't really use the flour any other time. I just use that flour to kind of soak up any moisture that's in the wood. Uh, but again, this is semolina flour, and this is uh, basically the ball bearings. Uh, so that when you launch your pizza, it goes off nice and easy and doesn't get stuck on the wooden peel. So that's what we got here. Olive oil, got to have that. That goes on top of the abits when we're done assembling it. These are Italian Sclafani tomatoes. You can use whatever tomatoes you want. We can have a whole separate video just on tomatoes. There's probably a hundred different tomatoes. There's Italian tomatoes, California tomatoes, South American tomatoes, um, but what you want to make sure is that you actually get whole tomatoes because we're going to mill these and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. And there's a huge difference between buying pizza sauce or a tomato that's already been milled and had things added to it as opposed to a fresh can of tomatoes. It's super important. Um, DOP tomatoes are the best. They're very expensive. They're highly counterfeited but you'll see maybe when you're shopping that you'll see a DOP label. Those traditionally are the more expensive, but better quality, better tasting tomatoes. And um, again, I can do a whole video on it, and maybe I will, but just know that you want to get whole Italian tomatoes or California is what I recommend. Sea salt, fine sea salt. We're going to add this to our uh, tomato sauce. Uh, we're going to go over that. A little bit of oregano, not a lot. We're going to go over that. The next thing we have uh, is, this is really nothing more than a, than a cake holder, um, but I usually start my doughs in here and then I go on the bench. Um, there's two kinds of stretches. There's a bench stretch and then there's a knuckle stretch. Uh, the, the bench stretch is much easier than the knuckle stretch and there's good and bad to both. Mill for the tomatoes. Take the tomatoes out of this can, put them in this mill, it's called a food mill. This is a stainless steel one. There's three grates that come with these mills and they range in very small, medium, and large. I like to use the large grate. And um, what it does is it just makes uh, the tomatoes, when you mill them, it grinds them up into relatively nice uh, small chunks, which is what I like. Cambro six quart container. Mill, Cambro, goes on top, tomatoes go in here, you get the picture. One of the last things, and this is, I'll call it a, a somewhat of a bonus, is that this is a traditional tray that you would see on Worcester Street in New Haven. Uh, Sally's Peppies has them, I probably modern too, and a lot of other places. So. Um, this is kind of a, an old school thing that I really like and I think it really separates uh, quote unquote uh, the men from the boys or the girls from the ladies um, and also this piece of paper is a deli piece of paper and again this is a Worcester Street thing. You have your metal uh, tray which you can see has been used a lot with all those marks on it and they take and they put a piece of white deli paper on before they put the beats on and then they actually write the uh, number of the table in the corner. And again, we're going to go over that. But, uh, you know, you don't really need this. If you have just a traditional round aluminum um, tray, that's fine too. But since I like to go as close as possible to Worcester Street, this is what we're going to get. Okay, everyone, we're going to go over real quickly the steel plate. This steel plate is a steel plate by a company called Baking Steel. It's a half-inch plate. It's 19 inches wide by 20 inches deep. Um, the most important thing is that you get a steel plate that fits your oven. As stupid as that sounds, the worst thing you could do is not measure and get something that's uh, too big or too small and then you'll only be able to make a small beats. So I'm going to show you quickly how to measure your oven and order the right thing. If you guys like what we do, we really appreciate you supporting us. We do have an affiliate link for Baking Steel um, and again, we'd really appreciate it. Before I show you how to measure it, I want to make sure you guys know that there's a quarter inch plate, 
a three eight inch plate and a half inch plate. And um, those generally range in price and they vary widely. But I'm telling you that you want the half inch plate. Not that the other two won't work, but if you're gonna do this, you might as well do it right. Uh, so I highly recommend a half inch plate, whether you buy it from baking steel or not, doesn't matter, but a half inch is the way to go. First thing you wanna do is measure the width of your oven. Just like this. So I've got 23 and a half wide, and I've got 19 inches deep. Obviously every oven is gonna be different. The width and the depth are the two biggest components to correctly measuring this and getting the right plate. Half inch is the height of it, or three eighths or a quarter. The other thing you wanna remember is that there's different settings for your grate in your oven. And you can see that there's a setting that I have mine on. There's another one here, here, and here. So the closer you get to the broiler, which we're gonna use, uh, the more you're gonna to have to really watch this because the broiler works really fast and you don't wanna have a situation where you burn your abits. And there's a big difference between char, which is a brown or blacking of the edges and a burnt crust or a burnt pizza. So this here I'm gonna measure and I've got uh, nine inches. From my plate to the broiler is nine inches. Again, you're gonna to have to experiment with this a little bit in your oven because every oven is different but that should uh, give you a good idea on how to measure and get the correct plate for your oven. I wanna go over with you how to make the sauce. And this is something that is really critical and it's really important that you understand. The key to this sauce is to make it as fresh as you can. So right before you're gonna bake these pies, I would definitely grind your tomatoes, put your salt, put your oregano in them, and then put them on your pizza. The big mistake that people make is they use already cooked sauce or pizza sauce, and that's a no-no. You definitely don't wanna do that. Okay, everyone, ready to show you how to make the sauce. It's gonna be real simple. Just keep in mind that I'm using a 28 ounce can of tomatoes. It doesn't really matter what they are, who they're from, but 28 ounces is the key. That's gonna get you probably about four or five uh, 16 to 18 inch style New Haven up beats from it. So we're gonna start with a simple ingredient of uh, fine sea salt. We're gonna go with a teaspoon of that. And then we're gonna go with a quarter teaspoon of oregano. You can add whatever you want to your own sauce, but traditionally the sauce down in New Haven, New Haven style is uh, basically salt and oregano. Next thing we do is we're gonna put our mill on top of our Cambro container. We're gonna dump the tomatoes in. And as you can see, they're whole tomatoes. And we're gonna just start grinding them up. And there you have it. Before I take the uh, mill off, I always give it a shake to, just to get all the uh, meat from the uh, tomatoes that accumulates on the bottom into the bottom of the Cambro. That's 28 ounces of tomato sauce, ready to make a nice abits. Here's the ladle. This is a eight ounce ladle. You can buy a six or an eight or a 10, um, but I usually try to use an eight ounce ladle. And then what I do is I come in and I mix it all up nice and nice. And if you see this consistency in the tomatoes, that's what you want. That's really New Haven style right there. Okay, everyone, now the fun part comes. We're gonna start making this our beets. We got our wooden peel here, which is what we're gonna assemble our pizza on. We're gonna lightly dust it with some bench flour. Nothing too crazy, just a couple pinches. Make sure you work it in. The most important part are the edges right here because that's inevitably where if the pizza is gonna get stuck, it's gonna get stuck on the edges. So you definitely wanna make sure that you have some good coverage on that. And then I put the semolina flour. And again, a couple pinches. Two tree, never hurt anyone. I always rub it in circularly. I don't think it really matters. Most people don't even rub it in, but I just want to make sure that I can get this pizza off the peel. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our dough and our container, and it's about room temperature. I've had this out for a couple hours. And we're going to put it in this little flour bath. It'll come out. Just give it a little sh couple shakes. And it comes out right in our bath. Take it 
fold it over. And then what I start doing immediately is I start spreading it out as much as I can. So now we've got this as far as we can go in our flower bath. We're going to put it on the bench. Just so you guys know, this is called a bench stretch. I'm going to put some flour on the bench. I take our dough, we're going to lay it on the bench. Now what we want to do is obviously we're trying to take this dough and make it bigger or 18 inches. So the first thing what we want to do, and I'm going to kind of do this really slow so you guys get the technique, is you want to work these edges out and then you go in the middle. Then you work the edges out and you go in the middle and then you turn it over and do the same thing. So all I'm really doing is coming here, I'm putting my fingers down and I'm pressing out. Out, 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 out. You get the groove. And then I pat it in the middle. Then I come here again. Out, out, out. Then I pat it in the middle. Now I'm going to turn it over. Same exact thing. Get these edges, and I'm basically pressing this down. You can press it or pat it, whatever you feel more comfortable with. But the bottom line is, you're looking to get this dough and spread it out. And you just got to keep going around. Another thing that's super critical on New Haven style is that there's not a thick crust. A lot of pizzas I see have a huge crust, and New Haven style is not that. New Haven style is very thin, so you definitely want to make sure that you pat down these edges. And again, I'm doing this super slow motion, but I'm just trying to explain to you how this works. And you can see this dough is just basically taken off. And the reason why it's taken off is because we have that high hydration dough. If you had a 60, 62, 65 hydration dough, it would be very difficult to be doing this. So that's what we have. The way I take it and pick it up from the bench is I usually take the edges and I fold it over my hand like this. So take it, fold it over. You see this here? Very important. And you want to have your fingers down, not up. Take it. Put it right on the peel. And what I generally do, because it will contract, is I take the edges and I work it around. Little rip there, no problem. So I take this and I work this around the peel because I want to get a full 18 inch pie. So you're gonna notice that this is not round. Well, little fact is that New Haven style of beads is not round. It's pretty much everything but round. And I'm not saying that you can't make it round, but if you went to Worcester Street, which is one of the most famous places in New Haven, where uh, Sally's and Peppy's are, uh, you're more than likely not going to get a round pizza. You're going to get an oval pizza or a football-shaped pizza, but definitely not round. So here you have it. We did the bench stretch. We got it on the peel, and now we're going to sauce it. Take our ladle of sauce. This is an eight ounce ladle. Put the sauce down. Use the bottom of this to move the sauce. And the general rule of thumb is you want an inch away from the edge. So you start in the middle and you work it around and you work it out. Again, go and start in the middle, work it around. You want to get an even distribution in a perfect world. And there you have it. That's the sauce. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our deli sliced mozzarella, which is this. What I do is I just put it right around the edges.
put a couple in the middle and I always take one and I break it up for what I call the slots or the gaps just the big ones and that's what you have that's your mozzarella next we have our olive oil and this is just a squeeze container and I cut the tip uh, probably uh, just maybe a quarter of an inch off start in the middle work your way around and that's it. Again, this olive oil is, you can use less or more. It depends what you like or your family likes. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some Pecorino Romano. Again, I told you that I buy a quarter wheel and I grind my own, but uh, it doesn't matter as long as you have Pecorino Romano. And I generally am very generous with this. And I put this around the whole pie. Okay guys, this is what you have. This is our New Haven style of beets. This is a mozzarella. I showed you how to assemble it, sauce it, cheese, pecorino romano. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put it in our oven on the steel plate. Okay guys, next step is to launch this baby. We're going to put it on the steel plate. I always give it a little shake before it goes in so I know that's going to go in nice and nice. And as I say with this step, this is where we make love, right here. Nice and nice. Here we go. Take the peel, you put it all the way to the back of the oven, lift it up about 45 degree angle, and you start quick shakes. And it's off the peel. And it's inside the oven, and we're ready to roll. Here we go. Okay, everyone, this is going to be our first check. This our beets has been on the steel plate probably for about a minute. So we're going to take our steel peel, and we're going to open it up and see what we got. So as you can see, it's baking nice and nice. You can hear it. Things are starting to bubble. Things are starting to get happy. So we're going to take our steel peel. And we're going to get underneath it. And you see how it's nice and loose already. This is really good. This is exactly what we want. We're going to take this and take it and turn it about a half a about half a turn. And we're going to come back another couple of minutes and we're going to check this bad boy out. Okay guys, this is what it looks like after about three minutes. I'm going to take another turn with the steel peel. That was again another half turn. Okay everyone, we're at the five minute mark. What we're going to do now is we're going to put the broiler on. And we're, that's, what, that's how we're going to have that brown top and a little bit of char. So the broiler is going to go on right around the five minute mark. Okay everyone, this is the Abitz under the broiler, probably been in for about seven, eight minutes at this point, and we're going to turn it. You notice this thing's getting nice and charred. Nice undercarriage right there, see all the leoparding? It's beautiful. We're going to just keep letting that go. This is another thing I do is the finger test. This is all nice and crunchy. No soft edges, I go all the way around. Okay everyone, we've had it in probably total about eight, nine minutes maybe. Last two, three minutes on broiler. As you can see this thing is sizzling and it smells incredibly well. This basically is the essence of a New Haven style of beets. This is a moots pie. We're gonna take this out and we're gonna put it on the cooling rack. And I highly recommend a cooling rack probably for about three or four minutes to let it cool down. Here we go. That's a nice abits right there. And there it is, New Haven style abits on the cooling rack. Total about eight minutes. Amazing what you guys can do at home. And we're gonna put it on our tray that I told you that you, if you went to Worcester Street, you'd find this tray. These are trademark clear plastic plates, napkins, knives and forks. The real Italians, or the real people who love our beets, don't use the knives and forks, but I gotta put it on there to make it authentic. The Haven style of beets does not get cut up into equal spheres. And I'm gonna show you how we do it here. We always go down the middle, and then we just randomly cut here. Start at the crust, break through the crust, you can hear the crunch, and goes down. Crust, goes down, Notice this pizza, it's all brown. 
It's got some char, some dark spots. It's not round. It's absolutely fantastic. So now we're going to have a little slice of our beets and it's going to be all good. Okay, everyone, it's all done. All set. You guys can do this at home. I showed you every step you possibly need. We got a mozzarella beets here. Nice leoparding underneath. Nice surfboard piece. Manja. Mmm. This is good. Please smash the thumbs up button. Subscribe. Give us some comments. And go to our Facebook group, All About New Haven Style of Beats. Good luck.